to Who Wants to Adult Anyway. Thanks for listening again. Do you know what, Cole? I have a revelation this week. Tell me your revelation. So, my dad told me to start watching a programme and I've started watching it. And let me just tell you, it is fantastic. What's it called? It's on Netflix. It's about Formula One. It's called Drive to Survive. It is unreal. It's like a documentary following the drivers. And I mean, firstly, for all the ladies out there, there are some very nice looking drivers that it's quite nice to watch, you know. (laughs) Um, It entertains the boyfriend. He can get on and sit and watch it with me and, you know, we can listen. It's really good. Wait, so... This program is your revelation or you've had like a revelation from it? That I like Formula One. That's my revelation. Oh, I now want to go and see the Formula One. You want to go race car driving? Yeah, I do. I want to I wanna go... No, I don't want to drive the car myself. You just want to watch it. I just it. want to watch. Don't they do them amazing like Grand Prix in like exactly. Abu Dhabi and stuff? Exactly. And they're honestly... Who's your so favourite? Charles Leclerc. And what car does he drive? Ferrari. <laughs> I love him. My second favourite is Daniel Ricciardo. And now he swaps around a bit, but he's at Renault at the moment. In the stage I'm at, but I know that he doesn't stay there. I'm a few years behind. Wow. Courtney, you have to watch it. Honestly, honestly watch well, it, Well, I mean, everyone. if it's going to be me and Cameron watching it together, then I'll watch it, because normally it's just me watching these shows on my own. You'll watch it together. And honestly, I had absolutely no interest in Formula One before this. If anything, like my dad used to watch it and the noise... <laughs> Yeah. It used to annoy me, like on a Sunday morning, I used to think, oh, shut up, like, why is that on? That's so annoying. Um, didn't get it at all. Now, I love it. I even watched the race last Sunday, the live race. <laughs> I loved it. How many laps do they do? Oh, gosh, 52, is it? Fucking Might hell. be wrong. I might have just made that up. Well, maybe I'll give it a go, and then next week I'll let, well, no, because I'm, not, I'm going away, so I won't be letting you know by watching it. But I will give it a go. You should do, honestly. I'm telling you, everyone, it's a a thing. I'm going to make it a thing. I've been watching Are You The One Oh, yeah, that used to be my favourite programme. Yeah, it used to be my favourite. Yeah, I'll be watching that. Is it a new series? Yeah, new series. The Americans are bloody crazy. The Americans always. The last one I watched, they did like a a non-binary one where everyone was sort of like gender... Fluid or like, um, is that the right word? Sorry if I'm not saying the right words. If it, uh, everyone was kind of like fluid in like who they liked. Oh. And so like everyone kind of liked each other. That was the last one I watched, but that was years ago, actually on MTV. So is it on Netflix now? It's on Netflix. That used to honestly be my favourite programme. So it's a completely new series. Yeah, completely new <gasps> series. It was good. Oh, that's what I'm going to be watching later. And I've got a night in on my own. <laughs> Can I make you die? I Right, on Netflix, they've got these shows about like, is it cake or is it real? Oh, I've seen it. I've seen it. I know. I really enjoyed that one. um, One of my friends and her boyfriend, they've literally sat and watched like all of that. They absolutely love it. Yeah, I finished it. It's like mind numbing TV. I literally, me and Callum were obsessed like to the point where we went and got some cake because it just looked so nice. Oh, what you you made you fancy cake? Made me fancy cake. When when do you ever have cake? Even when it was like like random things like a water bottle that looked like cake. looked like cake. But when they cut into the cake, it was looked so yummy. They'd make it like rainbow in the middle like just looked unreal to be fair when I was in my old flat there was like a um, like a dessert shop right by there and we used to always get I always used to get chocolate cake from there but I I love cake so much I just don't eat it enough because you you only really have cake around a birthday really would you not but would you not buy any like little like me and George sometimes buy those um what they called like little angel cakes no that my mum never buys them I mean, you're going to live on your own very soon. Gordon I know. Gray. You can buy whatever you I've already want. Said, I've already said in my head that I'm going to have the most unbelievable snack drawer. You'll regret that instantly. I know. Put on <laughs> I know. That's what Callum's saying. Callum's like, we should do it where we have no crap in the house and we just won't eat the, the rubbish. Yeah, do you know what? Before you move in, you'll make all of these rules. But actually, when you, you know, when it comes to it, you'll, you'll just be like, like it is at your house now. I want like my snack you, drawer. Well, if you fancy something, you'll just go and buy it. And you'll just Yeah, because we actually have a sweet shop opposite the house. Yeah, you just will. You'll just go and buy it. And I think that um, the freedom of buying whatever you want, whatever you want is quite nice. But we have like a like a cupboard that's got all of our rubbish snacks in it. We just don't, you just learn to not, I mean, you're quite good anyway. You don't like, whenever I'm around your house, you're not really like in the snack drawer. Like Oh my God. 
right, I came up with two bags of pop chips. I was like, do you want a pack? You went, no, I'm being good. Pop chips, at least they're Bear in healthy. mind that I'm eating the pop chips. So no, I do go in the snack drawer a lot. Yeah, Callum's like on a proper health one, isn't Callum it? does not touch the snacks. It's me that touches that. Yeah, wow. I don't really have that kind of um, willpower, to be honest. I am... Um, I like a snack. I don't think to pride yourself, though. I think eat it if you really, really fancy it. Or be good, like, Monday to Friday and then eat your snacks at the weekend. Just, yeah. You know, everything in moderation. Christ but this, like but I feel like this, this conversation is quite good to get into what we want to talk about today. So what we want to talk about today is Mental Health Week. Yeah. Um, and I know food and mental health... Yeah, go food for each other. Yeah, food for me and my mental health is a big factor. Mm-hmm. Um, like when I'm on, when I put myself on diets and stuff, it does make me miserable. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, the we're talking here about like starvation diets. Like I think sometimes we have had. Um, well society pressuring us or i mean or is it us pressuring us because i think that sometimes we would go um on away trips and have to do bikini shoots and um just be on instagram really like looking amazing and i think there's lots and lots of pressure not really just for us for everyone now with social media there's pressure for everybody to look good it's not just like people that are well i mean what are we like z listers in the in the, i was gonna say in the spotlight like as if we're like super famous we're not um but you know like you know the the light was probably on us a little bit more but with social media i think that everybody's sort of pushed into that light or everybody's open to seeing all of these amazing looking australian supermodels on instagram but do you remember there was a time where i you you and amber would all do your bikini shoots and i just would never ever ever have a photo in my bikini yeah I never ever yeah. you if you looked on Google there's probably like a handful of pictures of me but I will never stand in front of a pap and have pictures in a bikini because I don't feel I don't I, I felt like people would say, I, I was scared for people to tell me that I looked fat yeah I mean there will be stages I think when I've definitely put on weight in the past where I would say no to bikini pictures but I think that uh, when we first went on Towie, I remember we did that bikini shoot and obviously it was the first um first thing of its kind really that Mm. we'd done like you know we did all these um with this sort of like paparazzi we were new new on the show we were the new cast members so they did this big um uh, like this shoot with us really didn't they and we were in our bikinis because we were in um Gran Canaria we're in Gran Canaria yeah um and I just remember you know thinking I looked half a k and posing for the camera in my bikini and then these pictures coming out in the Daily Mail and I remember just breaking my heart I remember thinking oh my gosh I look terrible Mm. and before that in my mind I looked quite good I know (laughs) how wrong I was Um, but like I've I've always always felt in, in between you and Amber, I've always felt really insecure about my body. Where I am a bit shorter, I have got bigger hips, I have got bigger shoulders. Got bigger I, do. You do I do. I do. You're so slim. Wait, this is exactly mental health week. This is what we are talking about. This is such a damaging red flag, toxic conversation <laughs> that we are having. Courtney is comparing herself, firstly, to us. No, firstly, I'm not comparing myself firstly, to you, but I'm saying that I know how that, I feel when I'm standing next to you how, and Amber in a bikini. That's how everybody feels. I feel like that when I'm standing next to Amber in a bikini. That's just, that's not... What, ne- like not next we, to me? We just... <laughs> but I wouldn't... But I'm this joking. is the thing. Me and you, are, I'm a lot taller than you. I'm a lot, like, heavier than you. Like, because I'm taller than you. So I would never compare my body to yours because we're completely... We mm. are completely different body shapes. Whereas me and Amber are sort of relatively the same sort of height. Do you see what I mean? So I yeah. could sort of... Whereas, yeah, because you're... Um, slightly shorter it's just not comparable that's what I mean that's what I mean by this conversation is toxic it's so silly I know um because I don't actually you know you're petite you're a lot more it's it's how you see what I'm trying to say is like how we need to stop this whole thing of like how we see ourselves like everybody else sees but this but this is what I wanted to get on to is like at the moment I don't hate my body I actually look in the mirror and and I don't hate my body I think that comes with age right but I'm too scared to upload a picture of myself in a bikini. Yeah. Even now, I'm petrified. Well, it's quite a big thing, really, isn't it? You're kind of um, half naked, really. But it's not even that. I just don't want people to... I don't want people to 
to, to put me down where I'm in actually quite a good headspace with my body at the moment. Yeah. Like, I'm not at my biggest, I'm not at my smallest, but I don't hate myself. Oh, I just think, I mean, you put up that quite sexy picture the other day on your stories. Like, you looked amazing and go for, good for you. You should put that up. Like, I think that you just need to... People are always going to say something and I think you but just I need don't know to block why, out the noise. I know, but I don't know why we should feel so scared about uploading a, a bikini picture if we have put a bit of weight or if we have got big hips or we have got... Why, why do we feel so petrified? We need to like love ourselves. Because people... i tell you why. Because people on social media are really, really nasty. That's why. And I think that, yeah, I think with mental health week we just learn we need to learn to be nicer to each other we need to champion each other like especially women women tearing each other down is just honestly it's so toxic it's um it's hard to see as well especially like young girls and they do it and they all comment on each other's pictures like really nasty stuff or people like comment on our pictures really nasty stuff and I think how would you feel if somebody said that to you yeah like it's just not I just would never, listen, we're all different and each their own. And I do think that the generation of social media and being nasty to each other on social media slightly missed me. Don't get me wrong. I get it all. But I would have never, when I was younger, um, I would have never gone out of my way to comment on someone's picture, something nasty. Never. Don't get me wrong. I would have watched, I watched TV and there were people on TV that I didn't particularly like, like or think that they were my kind of person. But I would have never found them, gone out of my way and found them on social media to tear them down. I would have never, ever, ever, ever done no. that. Um, so that's what I mean by like the generation kind of maybe skipped us. I don't know. And you know what's even worse than Instagram, TikTok? Yeah, you've been the people this. of TikTok are so nasty. Is that because it's a younger generation on there? That it is a younger generation. Yeah. And they've been brought up around, I mean, they were literally, they probably don't remember a time before Instagram, some of these. I know. Uh, but then they're the, like the, fir the first people to cancel, you know, the cancel culture. Yeah. They're the first people to cancel people for doing something wrong. But then... But then it's like everyone's commenting horrible things on, on people. It's just mental. Yeah, it's very contradictory, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, it's just, and I think that I honestly think, I mean, I am no psychiatrist, but I honestly think that social media and the world of the internet that we have created in this life of ours really has something to say for all of the mental health issues that we have in the world right now i think that social media plays a huge part in all of that like imagine a life before social media i feel like it would probably i was be so, so much peaceful. more happier you know when like instagram wasn't really that big of a thing back in the day you wasn't comparing what someone else had you know like this whole influencing world yeah it's a whole world of comparison who's got this job who's doing that yeah. who's got this who's got this new designer bag who's got yeah. this but then but then do you know what with designer bags right i've had a revelation so i saw a tiktok <laughs> and it was like louis vuitton um gucci all these brands target poor people like people with not that much money because yeah. they want the, the they want the people with not that much money to feel like when they buy that bag they feel like they're something yeah it's true though I, I listen don't get me wrong I, I've had I remember my first when I was sort of 17 I got like an acting job and I you know I got paid like a big chunk of money to uh, me to me at the time it was a big chunk of money and um I bought myself a Louis Vuitton you remember the Louis Vuitton bowling bag yeah. that everybody had <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, I bought myself a Louis Vuitton bowling bag that everybody had. And um, and I felt amazing when I held it and walked around with it. I felt like I was a superstar. I felt like I was rich. But do you, I so, do you, so when you see someone walking across the street with like a whole designer get up, what do, what do you think? Honestly, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this. I think if it's a boy, I think drug dealer. <laughs> That's what I think. Yeah. I think, oh, drug dealer. Or drug dealer's girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, that's bad, isn't it? But so it's not, so realistically, this whole thing has kind of changed now. Like, do the, I'm really sorry if we're offending anyone. I don't mean to offend anyone, but it, I think that uh, years ago, people that were head to toe in designer, maybe we thought were rich. But now if I see somebody head to toe, like in Larry designer, I don't really think that. I kind of think, mm, a bit tacky. Yeah. Um, I think that, it's like subtlety is key. Yeah. You can be head to toe in designer, but it doesn't have to have the badges 
yeah. spread all over it. See, see, I do have a couple of designer bags, which I've had for years, which bags, I love. I they're like, and they're like st stample pieces and they're staple pieces. <laughs> Stample. 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 Stable, Stable pieces. pieces. But I've never owned designer clothing. Well, I think I think that actually I think that designer bags kind of slip under the they don't really fall into that whole thing. It's just when people are like um you know like a uh, big Gucci badge on the hat, big Gucci thing on the necklace, Gucci mm. top with a big Gucci um uh, like badge a big gucci bell like etc um that kind of thing i just think that doesn't i i mean obviously each to your own if you like that that's absolutely fine but yeah i don't think it's not got the same like the same thing as it used to i know i don't actually think that it looks i think people generally people that have got more money are more subtle with it they're not like flashing it all around being yeah. there showing everyone but this is this is what, what i wanted got. to come to so me, two years ago, even a year ago, I would want the latest designer bag. I want the bag that everyone else has got. I want the bag that everyone's talking about. But now, I don't care. Yeah. I don't want the same bag as everyone else. Exactly. I'm not that bothered about having the best designer bag or whatever. I get my bags from Zara now. Yeah. And then, and then you can get loads of them. Exactly. <laughs> Every colour. <laughs> you can get loads but of like, loads. But like, this is what I mean. Like in my head, in my head, I used to compare. I used to compare. I used to think what she got, what like, I want that. I want what she's got. I used to be that person. But yeah. now I don't care. I'd rather not wear the tra the frayed trousers that everyone's wearing it over their bikini. Yeah. I'd want to wear my own style. Yeah. And you know, each each to their own. But yeah, it's just not. I don't think that the whole dripping in designer thing is necessarily cool. I don't think that that. I think that you can be really like cool and classy or edgy or anything like that without honestly wearing like one designer piece yeah I, don't think, I think it's just how you put yourself together I don't think I think it's how you carry yourself as well I don't think it's anything to do with these really expensive designer things you know that yeah I mean it's just a crazy world isn't it yeah how we <laughs> Mental health and designer things. This is what our life is. But obviously, there. Obviously, me and Chloe are just talking about ourselves. But we know that there are so many different types of mental health that people go through every single day. Um, we're not talking on behalf of anyone else. We're just talking on behalf of ourselves. Yeah. Um, I think that it's um important to, like everybody always says, ask each other how we are. Um, human interaction is so important, and human. Um, contact is so important we need that like that's what we need as like beings um, and I think that we always need to remember that don't suffer in silence speak to people and I know like don't get me wrong I've luckily always been quite like um, touch wood mentally strong in my life apart from I had a bit of a wobble last year and it was the first time and I know it feels like you're being a burden like talking about it or like I felt like I was being a bore keep like going on and on and on about it like I felt like people was thinking like oh god get over it like that's what I mm. thought in my mind and so I wouldn't talk about it as much as I probably should have but you need to talk about it you need to get it out because as soon as you do that you realize that lots of people are feeling the same sort of way <laughs> it's mad how many people are actually going through what you're feeling yeah and you just need to keep pushing through because I always remember years ago, my mum said to me something like, life has a funny way of just working itself out. And I promise you, one day you will wake up and you won't even realise. And then all of a sudden, a few hours into the day, you'll be like, oh, I actually feel okay today. Mm. And it, it will happen. I promise it will happen. And I know what it's like um, to be in a place like you wake up every day. And I remember at one point I would wake up every day and I'd think, oh, like and I'd feel terrible and I used to think oh I just want to feel normal I just want to please let me feel normal I used to like pray to the mm -hmm. sky I'd be like please um help me feel normal and it just you just have to keep powering through because it mm. gets to a point where you feel better again and so, you will get there so this is what I'd done and I, I, I it helped it helped me but I don't know if it would help anyone else so at the beginning of the year so Chloe went through her breakdown before me, so <laughs> yeah. I was helping out, and then mine came. Mine and Courtney's lives always kind yeah. Of like it, it, mine's so de yeah, mine's a bit delayed. So mine, I was like fine, and then mine kicked in a couple months later, um, and I actually 
one of, at one of the times when I was having a breakdown, I was like crying, I couldn't breathe. I was like having a proper breakdown. I recorded myself yeah. because someone said to me, if you record yourself at your worst, your worst time and you look back a couple of months later when you're in a better place, you look back and you think, wow, look how far I've come. Yeah, 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 it's good. Yeah, document it, document your life. I found as well, and I know that we had the lovely um, lady on last series talking about how to manifest stuff. Um, and I'd seen on Instagram that people, when I felt really, really down and I was having a bad day and, uh, you know, I just felt rubbish about myself, write down what you're grateful for. And I never really understood this. And I used to see people do it and hear of people do it, see it on Instagram and stuff. And I used to think, well, what, why would I bother doing that for? That's not going to do anything for me. That's what I used to think. And one morning I woke up and I sat down everything, I sorry, I wrote down everything I was grateful for. And all of a sudden this list was just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I suddenly realized that I had so much to be grateful for. Like, and you know, you, you, it's really easy to like hone in on one thing that's making you sad and making you feel down or rubbish about yourself. It's really easy to hone in on that. But if you're to write down, it doesn't work if you just think about them. Cause I tried that. Just think about the things that you're grateful for. No, you need to write them down, pen to paper, write them down and it will, it really, really, really helped me. It just made me, I could see it in front of me. It was like this physical, tangible object that I could look at and see everything that um, I was grateful for. But that kind of makes you realise that there are more good than bad things. Exactly, that's why. And it was just really, it really helped me, yeah. And I just never thought that, to me, that didn't seem like anything um, that would ever work. But yeah, Talk to each other, um, keep pushing through and better days are always coming. Mm. Um, and yeah, you will just, life will just work itself out. It always it does. does. It always, always, always does. Um, You've got to go through the bad to come out to the good. Yeah. And that's what life's about. You know, people say it all the time. It's a roller coaster. You need to have the bad times to appreciate the good times. If life was always good, you would never appreciate it because it would just always be good and boring really so we need those ups and downs to appreciate life um okay so now we're going to move on Courtney can Courtney you introduce it okay so I, basically I am so invested in the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case I don't the, know much about it so to the point where I actually had a dream about me and Don, Johnny Depp <laughs> And I sent a picture of Chloe of him from the 90s. I, I was mean, like, he was oh gorgeous. my God, stunning. I mean, he's still gorgeous now, but. So the thing is, so TikTok, um, TikTok, a team Jet Depp, and Twitter, a team Amber. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. I wonder why. Maybe they um, paid them off. <laughs> yeah. So basically what the situation between them is, is she is accusing him of um, sexually assaulting her. Um, right. And they were in a relationship. In a, being in a, he was like, abusive to her. But they um, were in a relationship. They, they yeah, were married. Not just around. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Um, but he's basically suing her for saying that these, these accusations aren't true. And she's counter suing him. Oh gosh! Yeah, for like a hundred oh, million dollars, like defamation or yeah. something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Because she's like, to, which fair enough. I mean, I don't know much about this case, but the little bits that Courtney has shown me, like, this could ruin his career. He's it's a ruined huge his Hollywood career. Actor. He he was obviously in the Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, I, George told me this. Yeah, he. They, yeah, they, it, they? Disney have like completely written oh, him he's off. Such a shame because I really like those movies. So he lost like a hundred million dollars for that. So, like, I mean, is his career ever going to recover from this? Yeah, but, well, he works with Dior. Basically, I've seen, Still, a, I've see, yeah, so I've seen on Instagram him. that everyone's like trying to cancel Disney, being like, how dare you? Like, but obviously, um, it's the verdict of the of the. It's difficult, case. isn't it? Because, you know, <laughs> trying to cancel Disney now. But if Disney had kept him on doing it, there would be lots of people that would speak up and, and have uproar. a problem with that. Oh, so my God. Disney can't really win can they to be honest no let's, i know I um so and silly. now everyone's like let's sell out dior dior so, the aftershave that so he's dior, the face of that's interesting so dior are backing him yeah that's really interesting i feel like lots of big companies quickly squirm in situations like this a hundred percent they don't like um they don't stick with it well dior must really maybe it's like his friend or something and they kind of know the situation that I don't know, the CEO of Dior, yeah. whoever that is. So I've been watching the Christian case. Christian Dior, is Christian he still alive? <laughs> <laughs> so I've been watching the case online and like, I'm so split. Like I think Amber is 
like not all there. She's not all the ticket. What do you think she's doing this for then? Like I, fame, money? Money. Okay. So surely she had enough money being married to Johnny. Well, Bear. she got she got divorced and they had she got like millions from him and she said it's not about the money. I'm going to I'm going to give all my money to all the my divorce money to charity. Okay. And in the case it found it found out that she didn't actually give that much of the money to charity. She only oh, gave gosh. 3 million to charity or something and she kept the, the last the 7 7 million to herself. Oh, gosh. I mean, three million is still quite a lot to give to charity, to be fair. But, yeah, I mean, if you're going to say you're giving it to charity. Yeah, to charity. yeah. Um, but, like, there's stuff in the case where she, like, lies about. But then it's hard. But then there's stuff that he's done in the case where I think, hmm. Right, so we don't. So he possibly abused her. But so he he is an alcoholic. Right. And he would he would like do drugs, and he wouldn't remember. She's saying that he won't remember what he'd done the night before, so she'd recalled him. And oh, so she got she's got recordings. Yeah, like voice recordings. And what's he saying and doing? He's like he's not. I've listened to the voice recordings, and he's never physically hurt her. He's punched a kitchen cabinet, okay. and and in the case he goes, so I I hurt a kitchen cabinet, <laughs> but I never hurt Miss Heard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I get that. I mean... But it's hard. Like, who do you believe? Well, you know, relationships can be tough. And I think that if you're losing your temper, you're better to hit a kitchen cabinet than obviously to hit her. So I don't... Yeah, I mean, obviously that still comes across as really aggressive. I'm not condoning hitting a kitchen cabinet. But, you know... I know what it's like in a relationship to lose your shit. Yeah. Like it happens. That's life. So on the stand, there's base, there's pictures of her with a bruised face, and right. she's trying to make out that he's like hit her. But then she also apparently had a Botox and filler oh, filler um, appointment that that same time. Oh gosh, oh gosh. So she could be like completely lying. But it's hard. But then obviously there's like the whole women's rights thing, like you should believe the woman and it's like it's it's such a hard it's such a difficult I find that case really, i mean this is obviously really controversial but i find that really difficult to swallow that you should always believe the woman why should you always believe the woman you should look at the facts of the situation well and, this is why you're we're get, all getting the facts now yeah i don't think i don't think you should necessarily obviously you know i'm a woman i back women but you shouldn't always can't always just back the woman like if if the woman is wrong or in the wrong or is lying like possibly in this case then and it could ruin somebody's career listen don't get me wrong I've got absolutely no idea I'm just going from <laughs> what Courtney said here um but yeah you don't you can't just always believe the woman just because they're a woman that's not to me that's not this is a really controversial subject <laughs> but I you know I believe in equality and equality means equal and that's not equal if you're always just believing one sex over the other yeah so that um, the verdict is this week I think wow oh wait so we're gonna so what happens does any of them go to prison no one or? goes to prison oh. no one goes to prison but obviously someone's gonna be a hundred million pound cheat um um poorer and how much is Johnny Depp worth do we know <sighs> he's probably worth billions oh no not billions you can't be billions okay millions Maybe millions yeah i wonder how much of a dent that's gonna make in his um well career. he might he might win the he might win the case and not have to pay it out she would have to pay him out I'm, do you know what there's actually some really good court cases going on what about the colleen rooney and <gasps> oh my god do you know it? about it i need because someone was trying to tell me about it um and i just it just went i think i was drunk so i wasn't really listening properly i mean once again i actually don't know that much about it i just saw a little bit on the news the but other didn't day. she admit that she was selling stories i don't think she's admitted no i think that's why they've gone to court i think um Right, someone told me she admitted that she was selling stories, but her husband made her do it or something. I really see. I don't know that part of the story. I just thought that Colleen Rooney was saying that Jessica Vardy and her manager were selling selling stories on her, and Colleen Rooney like did something to catch her out. So Colleen Rooney had an idea that all these stories were coming out about her, and she had an idea of who it was. So she like blocked loads of people from her story and put up a like a fake story or something and blocked everyone bar like Rebecca Vardy or something and then the story still came it was like fake news the story came out and that's how she oh caught her out God. it's quite clever really isn't it but if that because doesn't just, scream guilty well exactly but I think that you, the last I knew I could be wrong Rebecca Vardy was um denying it 
Well, you would. You're not going to be like, yep, yeah, done it. It oh. was me. But what can you do at this point? You've like, basically, it's been proved that you... She oh, that is really messy. Her red-handed. I need to. Um, I need to look into you that one. You need to invest. This is your next I TikTok love it. investigation. So the verdicts this week of the Johnny Depp I one. Th- yeah, on the fifteenth. Okay. Maybe we should become lawyers. <laughs> no. I'm, oh my god. You know when people do that thing when they get invited to what is it? They get invited to call. Oh, to be jury a, service. Yeah, to be a jury. I know. I really I want would, to do that, but I don't think we will because we're self-employed. Oh, is that how it works? You I have don't to be know. Employed? No, I think it's just anyone, isn't it? Oh. Surely it's anyone. Well, it can't just be self-employed. I'm waiting for my calling because I would love to do it. Me too, I would love to do it, but I've had lots of friends that have, have actually done it and it, apparently it's quite boring because sometimes you'll go there for two weeks and there won't be any cases at all and so you just kind of sit there. Oh. You don't get to go in any cases. But then some people, the lucky ones, get to go in like a big, huge case yeah. and they end up having to stay on longer <gasps> than two weeks. Oh, my gosh, that would be my dream. But, yeah, my knowing our luck will never get called up. No. I'd love to, though. So whoever works in the jury service office and picks out the ballot, who's next? <laughs> Pick put me. our names on there. <laughs> Pick me. We would love to. And put us together as well. That would be even better. <laughs> we could do it together. I know. Um, I feel like we've talked about a lot of TV this week, but watch Anatomy of a Scandal. That's good. That's all about, like, it's a cool case. Oh, I think Callum's mum and dad are watching that. Watch it. It's really good on Netflix. Yeah, Miller I've been told it. to watch that. She's absolutely unreal, Sienna Miller. She is gorgeous. Um, you should watch that. You'll like it. I'll give it's that a one a go one. as well. Yeah. yeah, it's all, like, about a court case. Lots of TV, lots of court cases this week. Lots Woo-hoo. of TV, lots of court cases. And I'm going on holiday. And Courtney's going on holiday. However, she will be back to film. I will be back Friday. for next She's Friday. She's for a few days. Which is nice. Yeah, I'm excited to get a little bit of a tan. Get a tan. <laughs> I'm sad you're not coming, though. No, I know. I was supposed to come. But, guys, I'm an intern. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a job. I've got a job. I'm, I'm an intern, so I can't go away with all of my friends, which is sad. But, oh, well, we're all going away again soon. That is true. Woo-hoo. Okay, well, thank you very much for listening. We hope you enjoyed this bit of a miss. Mix match. Mix match. Bit of an everything session. Yeah, yeah. But we will see you next week. Yes, see you next week, guys. Bye.